afternoon to our dear customers and advisors. Thank you so much for joining our Alpha Branch Hands-On Baking Class. So today we're going to make a beautiful garden focaccia and okay, you can be very creative and very important is after the session, we will take photos together of our creation. So we'll all bake together at the same time and then also to tag your advisor, you can also write Alpha Branch and post on your social media. Okay, so this is a very beautiful Sunday afternoon that we're spending together. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to our chef of the day. She's Cheryl and she has been uh, baking for many years and avid baker and the last round she also did a sourdough baking class as well and I hope uh, some of you um, joined us and we will have more hands-on um, classes coming up, so stay tuned and always um, you get your our advisors will update you on our latest cooking classes. Okay, so let me just spotlight. So over to you, Cheryl. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us this uh, wonderful Sunday uh, to make uh, kasha garden garden kasha. So let's not um. Waste more time. I know everyone is very excited. You get all your ingredients beforehand. So let's start. Now, before I start, um, everyone already pre-measure the ingredients, I'm sure. So now we're going to place all the ingredients into the mixing bowl. So we have uh, water, 350 um, grams. I'm not, I've already pre measured, so I'm not going to measure it and just make it easier. So, 315. So, we're going to put the salt, okay, not salt, sorry, the yeast first, then the oil, then all the flour, and on the set. Can you all see? So you want to use a strong bread flour, about 13%. Um, so it gives you a slightly chewier texture. You can get a um, bread flour from Big Yen or even the supermarket. You can even use Japanese uh, bread flour as well as as long as it's uh, around 12 to 13% or 14%, it will be great. So all the ingredients go inside the mixing bowl. Then we're going to put one teaspoon of salt on top. I'm gonna use my finger because family is here. Then we are just going to place the lid on and turn to three minutes. Everyone following? Are you, so did you put, sorry, did you put the yeast in already? Yes, I put the water oh. um, followed by the yeast and then followed by the oil, flour, and okay. lastly on top of the flour salt. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put it at three minutes. This is the kneading mode, by the way. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move the camera a little bit nearer so you can see. Okay, everyone on. So let's do it together. Three minutes without the MC5. So what I like baking with uh what why I like baking for kasha is because it's so easy. Um it's a straight method like what we did a while ago. We place all the flour, the liquid, salt, um, yes, kneading function. And it's a straight method. So you just need three minutes to knead the dough, and that's it. And um also, why I like there are a few, few 
points why I like baking professional is because you don't need um, extensive knowledge uh, in baking. You don't need to know how to knead your dough and stuff because the mom is already done all the kneading for you. So you, and also because we bake Pukashia in a, in a pan. So you don't need to have the um, extra knowledge to know how to fold it and then uh, round it. What we do after the, after the kneading, we just pour on a baking tray, a baking can like this. I line it with a non-stick baking paper already, uh, a parchment paper you can buy. Uh, I'll show you, yeah. Something like that. You can buy at uh, Big Again or any supermarket. So I've lined the, the pan or the tray like this. And now while it's kneading, I will pour some oil. I will pour some oil to uh, smudge it around to line the pan. So you want to use more oil, uh, olive oil for pistachio bread so that you get the crisp of the of the bread when it's baked. So everybody, you can line. So while making Fukasha, you want to use a little bit more olive oil so that your bread will be um, fluffy, oil and not dry. So I set aside until it's done. Until it's done already. Okay, it's done. You can even bake, you can even knead and make a kasha with your children because it's so easy. And if they like to decorate things, then you can um, work with them and play with your yeah, your your kasha bread. So this is the dough after three minutes. Yeah. Now we are going to place the dough into the baking pan that we have lined with um, olive oil. So I just tilt it over like that and give a few turn at the big point here to release the dough. Okay, maybe Cheryl, you want to wait for a while because some I see are uh, still uh, in the dough needed. Ah, okay, no worries. All right. Um, going to wait for everybody. What we're going to do today is like uh, we're making the canvas now. Um, just like oil painting, you need a canvas. So. When we do a uh, kasha garden, we need a canvas to work on. So what we did a while ago, the three minutes meeting, is uh, Thermomix has created a dough canvas for you to masterpiece all your art with um, fresh ingredients, like um, um, herbs, vegetables, rooted vegetables, sesame seed, or anything that you think that you like to put on top of kasha, even chili flakes or if you like, you can also have um, like um, garlic confit. It will be great on the fukasha as well. So even during kneading time, if you would like to have more strong taste of uh, the dough, right? I mean the bread, the fukasha bread, you can actually add a uh, half a teaspoon of um, mixed herbs or chili flakes. It's entirely up to you. And you don't, yeah, like Oliver said, you don't need to preheat your oven because this is a cold bake method and it's very easy. So is everyone with me already?
you can, yes, you line the baking tray with the baking paper first. Ah, sorry, I should have um, told everyone to line the baking the pen first before I start. So I, I just wait a, wait a little bit longer for everyone to uh, finish, right? Wait, wait, wait. Go put Also, if you are done, you can prepare a, little, a small bowl of water next to you. Wet your hands and remove the extra dough from the lid. But you can actually also release all the dough beads by putting in here. I'll show you. A few seconds. See, just give it a, a quick spin and all the dough will detach from the blade. So what you want to do is just um, wet your fingers slightly and just gather all the dough from the mixing bowl. So in that case, you won't waste um, your dough. So how is everyone doing at this point? Still with me? Already given up already. Be careful when you uh, pinch out the, sorry, can you, uh, so I, I didn't get the question, it's too fast. Ah, I just put it at, um, without, um, the, without the time, I just put it at speed five to eight. Just let it spin all the dough out and stick to the stick to the uh, mixing bowl. That's all. No special, no special mode on that. This dough is on the higher hydration. Higher hydration means that um, the water content of this fukasha is slightly higher. Usually fukasha bread, it's um higher hydration. So that um your bread when it's baked, it's soft and fluffy. So I'm going to put this aside first. I don't need the mixing bowl anymore. We put it straight on the pan, is it? Sorry? We put it straight on the pan, is it? Your yes. Dough? Yes, it's straight on the pan. What I did was um, I tilt the mixing bowl over, give the plate um, button a little bit twist, and then it will fall right on the, the pen. So when everyone is done, then I'll move on to the next step. I'm waiting. Take your time. But hurry up. Just kidding. You will love this bread so much. You know, you can make it with your children. I've seen um, videos 
you can use the pepperoni and then you cut the fish tail out, cut it all round and then you cut it here and then it become a fish. You can make it with your, you can make it with your children. So what you want to do is if you make this kasha bread, right, you can divide in half and half. You can use a smaller tray. So one canvas for your children, one canvas for yourself. So you can make a competition and because of so easy, right? You don't need to use your hand to knead it. So your canvas is made in three minutes. So you can have a children bonding or husband and wife uh, focaccia garden uh, better or things like that. You know, you can have fun in the kitchen, not like the olden days where um, your mom, my mom would always say, hey, don't go to the kitchen. It's very dangerous. You know, uh, no, don't use the blade. Don't use this and that. But with the mom mix is with, of course, with, um, adult being around still, the children actually can cook along with you also. So making bread is not a, tab a taboo anymore. A lot of people say, I, I don't make, I don't know how to make bread because I try to make bread before. It's so hard. Uh, it's like stone. Um, now you won't have that problem because all the recipe, you can find it on our platform, which is the cookie dough, 70 over 1000. And I'm sure there's 10 over thousands of um, bread recipe that you can follow. Or perhaps if you have your own bread recipes that you can also convert it into a thermomics friendly kneading mode for you. Yeah. So the best um, kneading amount of flour for the kneading function is 600 gram of flour bread flour. Well, uh, a lot of people say, oh yeah, your kneading function only for bread. Nah. No, it's not only for bread. You can knead, um, you know those Chinese um, shin kun ji, the uh, abascus, yam abascus, you can also knead that. Then um, your fish ball or prawn ball or meat ball, you can also use the kneading mode function, right? or you, you want to make mochi, you can also use the kneading mode uh, function as well. Not necessarily the kneading mode is for your bread only, but there's other, um, other recipes that also use the kneading mode as well. So how is everyone at this step? Or still here or Peng San already. But shouldn't be la, because with the mom is so easy. It needs for you, ma. You see? Still look clean, not sweating yet. Uh actually, yes, it's quite hot. <laughs> so give um our host a thumbs up like if I can proceed to the next level, yeah. I mean the next step. So I'm gonna push um our German chef aside first. All right, so shall we? I'm going to move the camera slightly nearer so everyone can see what I will be doing next. Yeah, if you have still a little bit of time. Get a small bowl of water uh, next to you first. Yeah. Because the dough is a uh, higher hydration. So it might be sticky. Okay, depending on how uh, 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 your, your flour can hold up the water. So some flour doesn't hold up too much water. It might be a little bit sticky. So you might want to, want to just slightly wet your head, your fingers a bit, right? Okay, now um, moving on. We will just spread the dough evenly according to the pan. Just use your finger and push down. Don't massage it. Huh? Please don't massage it. But use your fingertip to push it, to spread it up. You massage it, it won't work. So you want to just spread it out with your fingers. Okay. 
and there is some oil be uh, at the at the the below that we line. You can also use to line your fingers and then spread the the dough up. So far, so good, everyone. Still with me. Don't worry about the oil because you need the oil to have a good, good, good super shell. Try to make it even on the whole surface. You don't want one side to be too thin and then the other side to be a bit um, uh, uh, thicker. Try to spread it, spread it out using your finger. Feel your dough like opa. Everyone getting that? Like I say, don't massage it. Uh. You have to press it down with your tips. But if you have long nails, don't try to pierce it through. Just press it with the finger, the, your, your round tip. You want to make it um, have a dimple, dimple focusing. So far, so good, everyone. So make sure when you press it down, all the thickness of the entire focaccia is uh, roughly the same now, because you don't want one side to be more darker than the other side. Yeah. So what we are doing now is we just created a dimple face canvas so that you can decorate your masterpiece. If your dough is too dry, at this point, you can drizzle a little bit of um, olive oil. Don't be so um, stingy. Use more olive oil because your bread will uh, turn out amazing. So use a little bit more of olive oil if you have, and then just make sure it's generously spread out the olive oil, right? But not too oily until basa puyo, then the whole thing like, like a bungee like that. Lah. Just make it um, even, even. So far so good, everyone? Okay, I think I, mine is done. Don't try to burst if you have bubble, right? Oh, um, truffle oil, you can. You can use truffle oil, but I think um, you want to use it to dip it when it's done, when the bread is done, because it's a little bit, um, you need to use quite a lot truffle oil and it's a bit pricey. But if you don't mind, yes, of course, you can use truffle oil. Um, yeah. If there's bubble, right, don't pop the bubble, just leave the bubble on. Okay, I'm going to wash my hand, my fingers, my hand, and I'll be back shortly. Okay.
And then we remove the water as well. So that everything is out of the way. So while waiting for the rest, you can also wash your mixing bowl. Just put one liter of water and one spurt of detergent. Go to the pre-clean mode, select go and clean your mixing bowl. Okay. Okay, like what Olivia say, there is also a pre-clean mode that you can use in uh, thermomics, um, one of the function, so that you won't um, do the hard work when you clean. So it's already pre-clean for you. What you need to do is just remove the blade and just lightly um, soap it and then that's it. It's that easy. Yeah. So while waiting for everyone, I'm also going to put away things so that I have more place to show you how to decorate. No, no need to pick it up. Yes, correct. So make sure your tray has no leakage, yeah, because we are, are using a lot of oil, uh, olive oil, just in case, just to preempt you first, because some of the foldings of the pan, right, does have a little bit of leakage. So if you, you want to be more uh, courteous on that, if it happens, uh, you don't want to have a, a smoky oven, because that happens to me once. So while waiting, this is how it looks like. Yeah, a dimple face uh, canvas. Doesn't look really nice, but after you decorate it and bake it, it will look nicer. So how is everyone doing at this point, at this step? Yes, it's a little bit early. You want to have a good all. You want to really cover all your, your, your fukasha, your canvas with all, but not bungeel kind, of, not bungeel. Uh. Don't overflow the all. It's fun, right, Casey? Yes. <laughs> You know what? Since I'm waiting for everyone, I bought this camera that can follow me here and there with the Bluetooth, you know, and I thought it would be fun when I move the tray to the oven and the camera will actually follow. So when I try it on my camera, it works. But when I try it on Zoom, it doesn't work. So there goes. But um, it's a good investment. Right? It's uh, not more than... Uh, uh, not more than 60 ringgit and this thing is so fun to use I think a lot all the advisors should have one also then you know when you're doing your video when you move the oven or you're trying to uh, show other ingredients it actually follow you yes I'll share the link with um, our advisor So how is everyone doing with your oily hands? Having fun or not? Trust me, it will be amazing when it's big. The smell of the focaccia bread 
the pillory of the 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 bread. And it goes so well with savory, with um you can grow, you can pair it with your meat dish, or you can even um make some soup. Come on, we got so many thousands of recipe here with soup. We can make tomato soup, chickpea soup, um vegetable soup, bosch. My all-time favorite will be pumpkin soup. I'll, um with um thermomix is easy. It's um creamy and I always like to add a little bit of olive oil and also and um some chili flakes because I like spicy too. So Fukasha goes very well with soup as well. Soup um I think it goes well with the nun and curry as well. Mm, I should try it. But I think it should be good. Yeah. So you can be more creative as well. If you don't want to use the amor or the, the masale herbs, you can use curry leaf. I'm sure it's going to taste amazing as well. Put some cumin, you know, toasted cumin seeds, um, curry leaves. I'm sure you can make into a Malaysian nice kasha bread. If anyone try, please let us know, let us know how it tastes like that. Cumin with curry, I think it will taste good. Hmm, yeah. So should we move on to the next step? Or do we need a little bit more time for everyone? Now you're edited, editing, edited to making dimples, right? I think we can continue because I uh, see everyone's pen, uh, they're ready. Cheryl, oh, do, we, do we need to preheat the oven? <laughs> no, we do not need to preheat the oven because oh. um, as Olivia shared, it's a cold bake. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, so we move on to the next step. Now, as your canvas is ready, right? I'm going to move it nearer, 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 nearer. Can everyone see clearly? <laughs> My kitchen light is a little bit dim. And, um, can everyone see? Yeah. So some of the ingredients that mentioned in the recipe, like leeks, um, onions and stuff, um, it's just a guideline. It's just a guideline. You can use uh, whatever ingredients that you have in your fridge or the leftovers, such as your two weeks ago onion. No, I'm just kidding. Two days ago, onion that you don't know what to do with, you can cut it and then decorate it. And if you have some leftover cherry tomatoes, um, you can also use it. And you know, sometimes you bake, um, you use your herbs and then there's some leftover. Hmm, this is the best time you can make focaccia bread. You just put everything on your canvas and then it will look nice and it will also taste nice. So what we're going to do is, you see this onions, right? Anyone have onions? I'll give you a little bit of time to, to cut it. So when you want to cut the onion and make the flowers, right? Like this, yeah? Make sure you do not cut all the bottom. Otherwise your onion will not fold like a piece of flower. It will all come out like uh, your, your dandelion when the wind blows and then everything just fly away. But can use your creativity also lah, if it doesn't hold this way. So it will give you a very nice uh, flower. Yeah, it will open up and it will look like a flower. So I'm sure some of you already cut it. But if your, if your onion doesn't look like flower now, you know why. Ah? You don't cut all the bottom tips away. All right, you want to leave it a little bit, but um, not too much, lah. just for it to hold it into shape like that, okay? You can also use garlic, garlic. Um, I like to use the Thai garlic, you know, the garlic where it's like one bulb. So I just cut this. So cut it thin, yeah, cut it thin. And we have um, sweet, Capsicum. This one looks like chili. Anyone got this? Yeah, you, you want to cut it like that to decorate. You know, actually, it's just your creativity. You can use um, the big pepper, uh, 
just you just imagine when you're cutting all the vegetables, right? How it will look like on your your canvas. So this is the what I cut up, cut. Up. And I would like to use I like to use olive. My favorite is black olive. I can munch on this anytime. So today, because I left a bit of black olive, you can cut it um, any shape you want. It's entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong how you want to cut your herbs or your, your, your veggies. Because when you start being Picasso on your canvas, there goes no need to be so precise and you know must be 40, 40 degree angle and stuff. So here is the stems that I would I like to use on the focaccia. Now this is chives. Ah, yeah, some drop on the floor. No, no. So these are the stems that I like to use it as the, the, the flower stem. Yeah, or grass can be creative when you can cut grass, make your canvas happening like a garden. Right? Those who have no green hands, never mind. You can do it today. It will happen. These are the rosemary. Smells amazing. Rosemary. If you have some leftover rosemary in the fridge, don't throw it away. You can always make a focaccia bread. Yeah. Rosemary um, give a very uh, um, fragrant taste to the uh, to the focaccia bread. And then I will let's start decorating. All right. So I also added some sesame seed. If you have sesame seed, because I wanted to have a little bit of soil on the ground and um, some cherry tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. If you have tomatoes like this, don't pull away the stem. It can be decorative as well. I'll show you in a while, yeah? So we have some cherry tomatoes. And of course, you want some, I, I can't pronounce, Olivia, how to pronounce the flower of salt in French? Fleur de sel. Yeah. So I try to learn in Google, but I cannot fleur the thing. So it's flower of um, salt, but I don't have the flower of salt. I will just use Himalaya of salt. Just um, this one is the fine one, but you, if you have the, the fleur of cell, fleur on cell or something, what was it already, Olivia? Fleur de cell. Yeah, you can use that. Okay, so now we're going to start decorating it. Your canvas can be this, like this, landscape or portrait. It's up to you, right? So we're going to use a um, few minutes to decorate together. You can use your creativity. All right, shall we start? Let's begin. Now, as I mentioned, some tips. Don't use spring onion because it burns very fast. Use um, chives, smaller, right? So I'm going to work on this. Is everyone with me already at the... Right, you can see, yeah? Okay. okay, we are not having exam here, so don't be so tense up. You use your creativity and don't, when you decorate it, right, don't press it down. Just leave it on top of the focaccia bread because when you bake it, the, uh, when it's in the oven, right, and it's proving, the bread will actually um, suck down the the ingredient, I mean the, the fresh ingredients. So you don't need to press it down, just put it on top like how you want to decorate uh, put something you put on top only. All right, so I'm going to put in this. Olivia, are you decorating as well? Yes, of course. 
Right. So this is the onion sort of flower. Sorry, a bit dark, right? Yeah. I'm going to put on top. Don't make it so uniform. You can scatter around, make it, um, you know, interesting. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use what you have, all the ingredients. There's no right or wrong, like I mentioned. Yeah. You have rosemary, you just pluck some rosemary. And then you can just sprinkle some if you like. So I'm going to put some. Uh, you can use scissors to stick off. Okay, later let's show our decoration. Yeah. Use some pepper, uh, your bell pepper. You know, you can use anything that you will like. Big flowers. Use your olive, don't forget your olive. This food, this food, 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 if your chive is too long, you want to make a shorter stem, you can do so as well. You can just cut it. Yeah, you can just snip it and make a shorter stem, you know. Line here. And place some garlic. Garlic tastes very good with um with your focaccia bread. Amazing. So you want to just put around, decorate it. So far, so good, everyone. If you're plucking the rosemary, right, you can pluck from the roots here, so it will come out the whole entire thing. So you can use as leaf, yeah?
All right. So how is everyone doing? Still here with me? You can make sun. You can do everything, anything actually. So just now that I mentioned, right, the cherry tomatoes, if you have the tomatoes with um, the stem like that, don't throw it. Don't, don't unplug it. So, I mean, don't pluck it away. You just cut like that and then you can decorate it. You know what's fun about this? When you're wrong, it's okay. You can just always pick it up and then just redecorate somewhere else. So, yeah, it's very forgiving. And it's fun. So if you have bits and pieces of the vegetables, don't throw it away. You can always make soup after this. You know, add some pumpkins or um, you like uh, chickpeas. I like chickpeas in soup. It makes the soup um, thicker and richer. You can use, don't, don't throw your, your trimmings away. It's a waste. So you can make it into, make it into uh, soup. So now I'm going to put some tomatoes.
So while you're working on your focaccia, right, while you're decorating, it's also proofing in the same time. So hence we don't need to preheat the oven for that. So let um so when we put in the oven, that's when it will do everything for you. So how is everyone now? All doing good? Try to use a little bit of more herbs at the... Oh, okay. Okay, yours is done. All right, mine is about done. I just want to finish up all the... All the... Remember, don't throw away the trimmings of your vegetables. Or your herbs, it goes well in your soup, so don't don't waste the trimmings. Yeah. Now, after you have decorated it, right? Um, you, you lightly brush some olive oil on top of all your ingredients so that it won't burn. Yeah. So I'm going to get brush and some oil. Right? Especially the onions. So we just add that, that. Like this, yeah?
The reason why we dab some oil on top is um, so that it won't burn. Because the herbs is thin. So we need a little bit of oil. Yeah. Make sure it's all covered. Even the tomatoes also. Yeah, make sure it's covered with some oil. But looking at this, I'm already hungry. All right. So we have a last step. Everyone knows what's the last step? Can someone tell me what's the last step? Bake in the oven. No, not yet. Before going in the oven, we have to sprinkle some salt on top. Not too much, yeah. If you are using table salt or Himalaya salt, uh, don't try to uh, sprinkle it evenly. Okay, so I have some salt here. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit around so that your vegetable also will have some seasoning. Otherwise, uh, uh, your kasha will taste a little bit bland. It looks nice. So your vegetable also needs some seasoning on top as well. So you put some salt. Careful not to scatter only one side, but sprinkle it all around corners and stuff. Corners. If you like chili flakes on your focaccia, you can also use chili flakes at, at this point. Make sure you go to the corner as well. Yeah. Right, so mine is done. How is everyone doing? So this is how mine looks like. Later we should take um, a photo together when it's done. So should we proceed to the next step, putting in the oven? Maybe we take one before in the oven and we take one after. Ah, okay. Hang on, ah. Okay, wait. I also want to take one. Hang on. We're done. I'm done too. Wow, Ooh, so nice. Mine cool. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that looks so good. Yeah, that's 
Okay, so we will put it into the oven now. Everyone's um, creation. Can you show your creation? Very okay. nice. One more time. Wow. Nice Edrin, where are you? <laughs> okay, this is mine. My garden. The green one is big. My <laughs> garden from my garden one. Wow, oh, Elena, nice. Very Who's nice, Jane and Rosine. So nice. Wow, you went to Charlotte this year today with us. <laughs> yeah. I should have asked Gabriel to join. It's fun. Okay, let's see. Let's go around and see. Let me. Okay, everyone hold on to your. Okay, everyone. Uh, yeah, show us your video hold, and then we can do a screenshot. Okay, let me do a screenshot. Okay, let's see. Okay, can everyone hold your? Turn on your videos, please. Okay, me needing supper too. Okay, turn on your video, Judy, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. Okay. Zini, can you turn on your video? Wow, look at all those beautiful Fukasha, so nice. Let's see, yeah, who else? Yeah, if you turn on your video, then you will be in the spotlight. Okay, yes, Nina. Okay, let's wait for everyone. Okay, let's take a, let me take a screenshot first. Wait, yeah. Let me just try. Mine is sliding down. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a screenshot, everyone. Ready to smile? Yeah, wait, yeah. One more, one more. Okay, one more time. Ready? Oops. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Okay, hold it. One, two, three. Okay, great. All Thank right. You. Now we are ready to bake. <laughs> so, so we're gonna put yep. in the oven at uh, 170 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. Sorry, how many degrees, Olivia? 170, 170. Okay. So you don't need to preheat your oven. You just straight away set 170, and then you bake it for 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, let's put it inside now.
do we have everyone back here now? Okay. Now it's baking. So now while it's baking, let me share uh, about our program with you. So as you can see, I have two Thermomix here. So it's really handy to have two Thermomix. So for our customers, those of you who have one machine, it is really useful to have two, okay? So now I'm gonna share more about um, Thermomix with you. So Thermomix has been around since the 1960s and um, it's founded by Karl Vorweg in Germany. Okay, so um, the company Vorweg is uh, managed by many generations. As you can see here, the founder Karl Vorweg and right now here it has, it is already passed down to um, the son-in-law. Okay, and um, Okay, this is the factory in uh, Wuppertal. This is the headquarters of Volvac. And here is the factory of the Thermomix, which is in France. It is north of France. see um, the thermomix is made by robots and certain things which uh, need to be assembled by human hand like uh, placing the motor and all is actually by human hand because right here is a very small area so the um, humans will be required to assemble that part okay and the first generation of the thermomix was since the 1960s it was a blender Okay, and of course, being born in a European country, they needed to add in a heating element to heat up soups okay, during winter and all. So as time has evolved, they've added a lot of features and functions. As what you can see here today, it is the latest model, which is the TM6. So there are an average of 44,000 advisors and 4,700 employees who work for Thermomix. And the turnover of just one product is 1.1 billion euros, okay? And this is um, in 2018, okay? So right now it would have exceeded that already, okay? And Thermomix has won numerous awards and recognition and uh, even the Michelin star chefs, they have it in their kitchen. So the latest was uh, Gordon Ramsay. It was seen at his um, restaurant in uh, the Savoy in London. So there are also hundreds of world patents um, for Thermomix as well. Okay, and this is a very famous chef. If you watch the master chef, celebrity chef George has been using it for um, more than 20 years. Okay, so he has been using the Thermomix for more than 20 years and every one of his restaurants has one. Okay, and even at home as well. Okay, and this is Chef Heston. Okay, he's a three-star Michelin star chef. Okay, so he owns 15 Thermomix in his kitchen. Okay, so many people have the perception that, you know, only those who are nook cooks will actually use Thermomix. But actually, in actual fact, it is also seen in commercial restaurants. Okay, so 
as you can see here, even the Michelin star chefs have it in their kitchen. So it actually helps the chef to, um, uh, in food preparation, it speeds up the food preparation. So what they really like to use thermomix is the, the precise heating control. Okay? So for example, like making sauces, um, you know, heating up um, food, things that they need to double boil, like melting butter, chocolate, you know, making gelatin and all things like that, which requires stirring for a long um, period of time. So the chefs actually use the thermomix in the commercial kitchen to help them to do that. Okay. And be passionate about thermomix. So when you join as an advisor, we have um, a lot of uh, cooking sessions like today. We also have a lot of team building uh, activities. And of course, we uh, have also a lot of hands-on sessions for you as well. So our vision is to have a thermal mix in every home. Okay. So how to get started as an advisor? So if you already have a TM6, very simple is to purchase either the light starters kit or the premium starters kit. So the light starters kit is 268 ringgit, okay? And the premium is 480. So at a very low start uh, fee, you get many things in your starters kit. So we have the apron here, we have the uh, cookbook, which is worth 160 ringgit. We have the thermal mat, which is worth 190 ringgit. So these are your sales tools to start you off the business. So if you prefer to have a trolley bag, which personally, I think it's very useful because sometimes we want to bring our thermomix, um, even you know, outstation for a staycation to our customer's place, it is very handy to have the trolley bag because this trolley bag is fully padded and especially designed to fit your kitchen, um, your smallest kitchen in the world. Okay, So you can bring it around with you. Okay, So you can choose between the Start, light starters kit or the premium starters kit and as you can see if you choose the premium you're paying 480 but you're getting thousand over ringgit um, value of items in the kit so very easy our uh, program is a 90 days program so in 90 days when you share thermomix and you have six friends who purchase the thermomix you earn yourself a free thermomix Okay, and in the event, if you did not manage to sell six, okay, if you did three, for example, you sold three, which means it's one in a month, okay, because it's a 90 days program, you get to, you get to purchase your Thermomix at half the price, which is 3,005. And we have many advisors who can complete in half the time, which is 45 days. And being a fast and furious advisor, you win extra incentives you get a thermal server, which is worth 360 ringgit and three cookbooks, which is worth 160 ringgit each. So in total, you get 800 over ringgit worth of freebies when you can do it in half the time. So we have many advisors who have achieved the free thermomix and also in half the time as well. So while you are selling your six thermomix in your 90 days, your source of income is by recruiting new partners. So when you recruit new partners or meaning you, um, you have new friends to join the business, you are rewarded with what we call recruiting bonus. So for example, today you join as an advisor and today you also recruit a friend, okay? Which means your friend joins the, the, the business, okay? So the first thermomix your friend sells you are entitled 1,000 ringgit, okay? The second till the sixth unit, every unit you get 500 ringgit. So in total, you get 3,005 when your friend sells her sixth, uh, sixth thermomix, okay? And this has to be completed in 90 days, okay? So the more friends who join you as an advisor, the more recruiting bonus you get. So after you have completed your first six units, so you can be as fast as two days or even a week. Okay, So after that, you've completed your six units already. You will continue to enjoy what we say, what we call personal sales commission. So in a period of four weeks, so every four weeks is one period. Okay, So if, for example, you sell one thermomix in a period, your commission is 650 ringgit. But if you hit 
four thermomics and above, as you can see, the commission increases. So for example, if you sell four thermomics in a period, your commission is 4,000 because four times 1,000 is 4,000. If you hit 10 units, your commission is 11,000 in a period. So let's have a look at advisor N, okay? So for example, advisor N, she sells one thermomix. Her commission is 650 ringgit, okay? And she recruited one partner, A, and she sold her first unit. So from the recruiting bonus, she got 1,000 ringgit. So in period one, her total income is 1,650 ringgit. In period two, she sold two thermomix. So two times 850 is 1,700. Her first recruit sold her second and her third unit. Okay, so she has 500 and 500 from here. So it's 1,000 ringgit. And she recruited a new partner B who sold her first and her second unit. Okay, so she has 1,500 from recruiting bonus here. So in total, her income is 4,200 ringgit. In period three, she hit club 10, which means she sold 10 units, 10 thermomics. Her, her income is 1,001 times 10. So she earned 11,000 personal commission. And then her recruits A sold the fourth and fifth Okay, fourth and fifth is 1,000 ringgit. And B sold the third and fourth unit, another 1,000 ringgit. And she recruited a new partner, C, who sold six units, okay, in, a nine, in, a, in just a period, all right, in 30 days. So this is a fast and furious advisor. So by recruiting this partner, she, she earned 3,500 recruiting bonus. So in total, her income was 16,500. So in Thermomix, we have many advisors who earn a four-figure, five-figure, and even six-figure income. Okay? So it depends on how much you want to earn in Thermomix. So do what you love and love what you do. Okay? So with a career in Thermomix, you're bringing a better life to many families by introducing easier cooking and healthier eating, okay? So we would love to have you in our family, okay? So other than earning your free Thermomix, you also have an attractive income with commission and bonus, okay? And of course, we also get firsthand information on product, on updates and so forth. And we also provide you um, trainings by the company and also by our branch and team managers. And you earn also monthly incentives, recognition, and rewards. And of course, we always, um, you know, we have activities together. We have cooking sessions together. And it's flexible hours. You can work at the comfort of your home. Uh, we have Zoom cooking sessions. We, you know, we meet new people. And it's a very fun um, um, career path, I would say. Okay. So... It's great to have two thermomics. Why? Because no waiting while cooking. Okay, so for example, now if I'm cooking, uh, I'm stir frying, I can always do dough kneading with my other machine. I do not need to be waiting because if I'm um, cooking for long hours like sous vide or even slow cook mode, which takes a very long time, I can have another machine to play around with. Okay, so don't wait. Contact your advisor today and get your second thermomix for free. It's very simple. All you need to do is cook, shoot, and post. Okay, so whatever you cook on a daily basis, take photos um, and share with your family, your friends, your social media. Okay, and uh, um, you can even create videos. You can do reels. Okay, and of course, you need to uh, share your identity depending on which team you are. And you need to let people know that you're an advisor, okay? So that when they look at your beautiful food photos, they are so enticed, they, uh, I mean, um, they really like what they see and then they will contact you because they know you are a Thermomix advisor. Okay, so this is the end of my sharing today. So if you have any questions, please contact your advisor who has invited you here today.
Okay, so let's have a look at our pizza. There's another, for me, there's another 13 minutes more. So do we have any questions that you would like to ask? Okay, we can always uh, answer your questions about baking, about dough kneading, or any questions you want to ask about your thermal mix. You can always type in the chat. Okay, and uh, while waiting for another 15 minutes, we can answer some of the questions. Or even if you have any questions on the advisor program, you can also type in the chat and we can address it. Okay, any questions? Or any of our managers, you have anything to share as well? We can always share during this time. We have about uh, 10 minutes. Okay, and uh, maybe I want to share with you. Do you know that you can actually watch videos from your thermomic screen? Okay, can you type in the chat if you know about this? You can actually watch videos. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't know. All right. Okay. Since you do not know, I would like to share with you how you can search for videos. Okay. So currently we have, let me just go to the page. Okay. Let me see. Okay, currently we have, um, okay, for Western, we have things like a uh, quiche, uh, which is a French recipe. We have lollipops as well. We have um, tiramisu, we have pasta dough, ice cream, cinnamon bun. So there are actually a lot of recipes with step-by-step -step guided video, okay? So let me just show it to you. So, for example, if you want to make tiramisu, okay, for example, or let me look for one. Okay, let's do cinnamon buns, okay? Let's look for cinnamon buns. Okay, so type cinnamon buns. You can do this together if you want, or you can just watch what I'm doing, okay? Can you all see my screen? Okay, so just type cinnamon bun. Oops. Let me see if it's the same cinnamon bun. Not all recipes have videos. You need to ensure it is the same recipe. Okay, let me just scroll. Many steps here for this recipe. Okay, yes. So, a bit closer to show you. So you just tap here. So the recipe basically, um, the part which uh, requires you to do everything in the bowl and all, they won't show you the video. But here is to show you how to actually shape. So some videos have music and some music doesn't, okay? So it will show you the step-by-step -step on how to do it, how to do the shaping. So currently, we already have many um, recipes with the step-by-step -step videos. So basically, it will show you what to do. Okay, um, you can also try vanilla ice cream. 
uh, lollipops, if you want to make lollipops with your kids, you can also explore that. Okay, so we have many recipes with videos. Okay, and for our customers um, about cookie do, okay, so you have received um, an email about cookie do. So we are launching the new cookie do very soon, uh, sometime in November. And um, you can choose to you can um, what you can do is you can actually um, key in and modify your own recipe okay for the new cookie dough let me just have a look at my so for oven you need to check on your baking for from time to time because 170 degrees for my oven might be different from yours okay so towards the time 30 minutes Maybe for my oven is 30 minutes, but for your oven is 35 minutes. So I want you to go and have a look at your uh, focaccia bread, okay? If you prefer it slightly darker, you can also adjust to 180 degrees. Okay, so it's up to you. So it can be 170 to 180, depending on your oven as well. So this recipe is good because you do not need to um, preheat the oven and also no proofing time required because why? While you're decorating, it actually will uh, have sufficient time to proof. And also because of the cold bake, when you place it in the oven, while the oven is heating up, it's actually also proofing at the same time because um, there's heat as well in the oven. Okay, so I really like this recipe because you can actually make it very fast. You don't need to have like double proofing and, and so forth. Yes, the smell is amazing, okay? So just some feedback from everyone. What's the, what do you like, okay? Do you like baking? Uh, do you like cooking? So what would you like to see in our next uh, hands-on session? Maybe you can type in the chat to suggest what kind of recipes you would like to learn. Pavlova, all right. Cupcakes.
How is everyone's Bokasha looking good? Mine is another five minutes. Anyone has already completed? <laughs> one, one more minute. Oh, that's fast. How will we know when the focaccia is done? Okay, so some tips is that uh, your vegetable, make sure that it's not uh, like slightly brown is okay, but not, not like burnt. And then your bread is light brown color. Yeah, so for me, I added another five minutes because the color is not my desired color. So it depends on your oven. So you need to check. So light brown, light brown will do. Cheryl, your focaccia is done. Maybe you want to show them. Okay. Yeah, let me, yeah. Someone do the drum rolling. <laughs>
We all ready? Can everyone see? Oh, whoops. So nice. Thank you. Oh, wow. Very nice. So pretty. Yeah, so the it's color. Very, yeah, light brown. It's very important to um, lightly brush your, your herbs and ingredients with um, oil so that it won't get burned or dried up. Can you see again, please? Cheryl, maybe we don't stand right under the light because we can uh, cannot see how. Yes, yes. Okay. Like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm so scared the break. <laughs> Very nice. But if ours is not as dimply as that, it's okay. I don't I don't even that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Fine. Not sure if that's a word dimply, but okay. Dimpet. <laughs> so I'm going to take I will take out on the um, board so that it's easier to see. Okay, mine is ready. We'll show you. Okay, let me see. Yeah. Can someone help me spotlight, please? Okay. Okay, mine. Ta -da! <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> wow, whose is that? It's so much fun. Wow, very nice, Cheryl. Oh, thank you. Actually, at this point, right, when it's out from the oven, um, you can also brush lightly with some olive oil so that um, it will not be dry looking. Yeah, you can do that. Usually, people will do that. Lah. So, if you want it to look shinier, garden, 
then you can lightly brush some olive oil on it. So anyone else have finished or we can all take a group photo? Has everyone completed yet? If you have, can you type yes in the chat so that we know and then we can all take a group photo. Okay, Alina is done. I have one more, still need a, a couple of minutes. Okay, yeah, let's see, looking. Wow, very nice. Rosaline, show yours. Wow. wow. <laughs> Feeling hungry, actually. <laughs> it smells so good. Yeah, it smells so nice also. Let me brush My one look quite pale. You can add a few more minutes in the oven though. Yeah, PC, maybe you turn yours to 180 and bake for another few minutes because it depends on the oven as well. Okay, okay, I'm bringing it in. Yeah. Oh, Gina, one. <laughs> Mine, I use 180. I think we can all use 180, 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. Let's take a group photo. Shall we take a group photo? Nang, yeah. Carmen, Sarah, I saw your lovely um, breads. Jane, Eunice, can you all turn on your video and then we take a nice photo? Aliza, who else? Nicole, you here. Let's take a group photo. Okay, I'm trying to tilt. Very nice. Okay, everyone ready? Yes. Ready? One, two, three, ten. <laughs> all right. I hope you all had a wonderful time. So you can also... Um, Share on your social media, tag your advisors, okay, tag me as well so that I can share. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Okay, we will have more activities together. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for sharing. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, all right. Bye. Bye. Thanks Cheryl. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Thanks.